going on, guys? I wanted to check out this video about Bobby Lee and his beef with Brendan Schraub. I hope I'm saying that name right. And also Theo Vaughn. I'm fans of all these guys. Probably Brendan Schraub, the least. Probably the least. I'm not really a fan of his personality. He's making improvements in his comedy. I think some of his podcasting is cool whenever he's not trying to like bully people verbally and maybe even physically, right? Um, as a UFC fighter, he was a hype. I liked him on uh, The Ultimate Fighter. He was cool, right? Loved him on Joe Rogan podcast. <laughs> Bobby Lee, uh, he was cool too. I think he's funny. Plays victim a lot though, right? Plays victim a whole lot. Theo Vaughn wouldn't change nothing. Wouldn't, wouldn't change a damn thing. I ain't seen nothing wrong yet, me personally. I think he's dope. I've been a fan of his since the real world. Didn't even realize that was the same Theo Vaughn. So let's check this out, man. Let's check this out. This video is going to be from Too Lazy to Try, right? This is a cool channel. I think they have this whole George Costanza thing going on that I think is funny. Make sure you check them out. Hit the like button. Even tell them that BXB's boys sent you. All right, let's get into it, man. Let's see what the whole beef and all stuff is going on with them recently. But if I'm not mistaken, just to have some kind of like backstory, I don't know if he's going to get into it. Bobby Lee girlfriend was talking crap saying that Brendan Schraub was trying to get with her. Right? He's like, ah, oh, this is sleazy. Fam, they were in an open relationship. Okay. Which means Bobby Lee girlfriend was allowed to do whatever she wanted. She didn't like it. Cool. She went on her podcast and threw shade at him. Everybody knew damn well who she was talking about. And then Brendan Schraub reacted. And then Bobby Lee played the victim and started crying. That's what I, that's the backstory. Bobby Lee plays victim too damn much for me. I like him. I think he's entertaining as hell, but he's always playing victim. In a lot of these situations, he's doing foul stuff, bro. He's foul. He might not be like that now, but in situations, he, sa he says and does foul things. And be like, why would you chase me down the hallway? Now, I'm not encouraging or saying that you should do any of that. Right? You should try to be passive in situations, but he's not no damn victim. All right. So recently, Brendan Schaub did an interview with a smaller YouTuber slash podcaster. And since it's a smaller channel, I'm sure Brendan figured it'd be a safe interview. And the host would just ask him about comedy or the podcasting industry or whatever. So I'm sure Brendan was thrown <laughs> off when the he host opened more. with a question about Bobby Lee. And then he ended with a question about Theo Vaughn. So I'll That's give this guy happen. credit. He did his research and he knows what the people want to hear about. Even though it would have been nice for some follow-up questions, of course, Brennan's response was just exactly what you'd expect. But it is a bold move for the interviewer to start off with a question about Bobby Lee, even though it wasn't really a question. He just said, the first thing I have in my notes here is the Bobby Lee controversy. And they just stared at Brendan like he's going to start going off about it. And of course, he's just like, this is what you're going to start with. You know, I'm surprised Brendan didn't just walk off and have his brother destroy the tapes or something. You know, for some reason, he was there. The very first thing I oh, had in my is was, uh, tapes. Bobby Lee controversy. Uh, man, that's how you started. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is the very it. first thing. Um, I was like, yeah, that is crazy to start that off with, but whatever. Uh, you agreed. He asked you a question. If you didn't tell him that you didn't want to talk about it prior, then it is what it is, bro. You kind of just got to deal with that. You got to just take the L, right? It is what it is. I mean, there's not much to the there, brother. You know, it's like um, I, I love Bobby. You yeah. know, it's um, yeah, good, good comic. It, you know, stuff happens. You yeah, know, shit happens. But yeah, that's it is what it is. We moved on. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but nothing but love for Bobby. Shit Did happens. You? Man. Yeah, you know, absolutely. Yeah, so Brendan definitely wasn't expecting that, but he just needs to learn to address this stuff better. Like when he did Skankfest a few months ago, I can't argue that was probably that. one of his best appearances, and he actually won some people over with that because he actually showed some humility and self awareness for once because he admitted that he's not a good enough comedian to perform at Joe Rogan's comedy club. So he should learn from that. Like right here, if you just said, yeah, the whole Bobby. Lee. <laughs> they didn't want you to dump on yourself, bro. But to be honest, in the comedy world, he's like a super rookie, right? Only person that's more of a rookie than him is me. But I'm not out here saying I'm the greatest comedian ever or doing comedy specials. Maybe in due time. Honestly, I think my memory is so trash. <laughs> I'm going to have to freestyle a whole routine. Cause man, I, I, I was trying to memorize. I freestyled a song the other day. Thought it was dope. 
trying to memorize it for a video. I'm sitting there like, what the hell did I say? I don't remember. Right? That's, I guess, the bad part about freestyling. But yeah, imagine me uh, doing some of my, my bits that I wrote. <sighs> yeah, but uh, maybe I could get it. Maybe I could get it. Get the memory thing down pat. Lee thing, I screwed up big time. I should never have done any of that. I feel so bad. I wish I could make it up to him. Anything like that. You know, because then people would be like, damn, maybe I should from the situation and he realizes how badly he screwed up. I don't, if you're talking about the Bobby Lee situation, I don't think he wowed out that much. I think he messes up a lot. But Bobby Lee be playing victim, bro. He wowed out. Bobby Lee would talk crap and he'd be like, oh, well, why did you, why did you talk crap back about me? I, I didn't. Ran, they had like a truce and Bobby Lee and his girlfriend decides to go on a podcast and bash him. What else is he supposed to do? And as far as whatever happened behind the scenes, I don't know. Like with the Reddit, I, I don't know. I don't pay attention to that. But other than that, yeah, I think that people over going a little too hard when it comes to protecting Bobby Lee, like he a little, like a little baby, like he a little girl from Rush Hour. But instead, with this response, just saying, you know, shit happens. I love Bobby Lee. Whatever. It just sounds like the same generic. Why he got love him? Given this whole time, like when all this initially happened, in the middle of all the truck walk drama. Brendan, he was threatening to sue people and Brian was threatening Bobby Lee and it was just a mess behind the scenes. But of course, when Brendan talks about it, it's like his automated response. He has to every controversy or drama or beef. He loves the person, they're best friends. They talk on the phone every day. And I don't think anybody's That's really fake. buying this to begin with. But then once all the information That's comes fake out, as hell. then it's like, damn, this guy really just lies through his teeth. Yeah, that's, that deserves some criticism. He should just be real. Like, I, me personally, I wouldn't mess with Bobby. If I was him, I wouldn't mess with Bobby at all. Right, wrong, no matter what. I wouldn't. I, I don't like being around people like Bobby. Right? If you're going to play that victim card all day, and then you letting the woman dictate what you do and what you don't, I can't be around you. Keith. I There's can't. no drama. Like Bobby Lee is one of my close friends. I mean, Bobby talk all. No one's been more supportive when I started than Bobby Lee, dude. Me and her are good, man. I, dude, when you talk about the secret sauce, Kalila is the secret sauce of Tiger Belly mm. of the Trash Tuesday. She yeah. She's such a. Sp- it's fake as hell. Yeah, yeah, it is fake as hell, bro. This is fake as hell. Say how you really feel, because she she was being disgusting back then too. Well, she actually was what started the whole thing. Right. So, yeah, I don't care if what she's the secret sauce of. Right. Nah, don't use me and my friendships in order to get clout and clicks on your damn podcast, bro. Right. That's nasty. That's mad nasty. And be like, well, we didn't do nothing wrong. Like, as is that where Bobby get it from? Smart and girl. No issues. As far as suing goes, I think it's a miscommunication. I think it's clear. I'm not a fan of her. Right? I'm not a fan. Clip of Clip that they put out, it looked like they were very angry. Yeah. Again, yeah. if if the, and I told her always come to me. And just with him complimenting Kalila shows how full of shit he is. And in the beginning, there he could barely even finish his sentence. Can't argue so with he's that. He's catching himself because he knows how full I of shit he is. Can't argue with you know, that. He's like bro. me and Bobby are best, or me, me and Bobby talk all the time, or you know, there's nothing there. People are trying to act like there's something, and he's always pretending like people are just making stuff up out of nowhere. But nobody needs to because this shit just writes itself. Like even with Mark Harley, you know, Brendan's former baddie wrangler slash handler, when he came out and tried to expose Brendan earlier this year, I was Brendan? like, you know, maybe some of the stuff he's making up, it just seems like it's too much even for Brendan. Like him peeing in the sink at work. At first, I'm like, you know, this can't be true. But then it turns out no, to be that true. Sound like wrong. And I think pretty much everything. No, no, that sound like that sound like Brendan. That's not from what I've heard. That's not like Brendan Shaw. Everything Mark has said about Brendan turns out to be true. Like also, he's the first person to talk about the whole podcast one alleged scam. Like months before everybody's talking about it, he said that Brendan was owed 1.6 million and originally thought it was from his agent. But then when somebody mentioned the podcast one thing, he's like, oh yeah, that's definitely it. So there's no need to make anything up about Brendan. I mean, the guy just attracts drama and controversy. He cannot stay out of it, even though when he talks about it, he always talks about how much he tries to <laughs> avoid funny. it and how he doesn't want to be involved in it. But for some reason, he always finds himself in it. And it's because it's everything past he tries catching to, up. to avoid it just ends up backfiring and making things a hundred times worse. And I don't think Brendan will ever realize that. Yeah, it's really you know, is like suing- his past catching up. That's, that's really what it is, bro. His past catching up. Certain things he did that was like crappy moves early on. Right in his uh, career, I guess, especially when once he had that Joe Rogan co-sign, he thought he was untouchable. 
I um, mean, now it's just, you know, it's coming back and people are going to get you the same ones that you dump on on your way up or the same ones that's going to stump on you on your way down. That's just the way it is. So, and honestly, he's not even down. So it's not I a mean, big that deal. smaller YouTuber. That was a terrible decision. You're doing great because it didn't do anything. <laughs> you know, the guy he sued is still making videos about him. And then what Brendan was trying to censor only made people more aware of it. You know, then everybody's making videos about it. You know, Penguin's one of the biggest YouTubers made a video about it. So that made things so much worse. But of course, Brendan, he learns nothing from it. And then he threatened to sue Kalila and Trash Tuesday. And then they mm. talked about it on their podcast, which just drew more attention to the whole truck walk thing. And then also, instead of Brendan just ignoring the fight and the kids are about it, he hires a team to try to figure out who's running it and have it taken down. And that was probably the worst mistake of them all because that's how he got Brendan and Brian Callen threatening Bobby Lee. And that's when everything just blew up in his face and he had to go on Tiger Belly to talk about it, which I'm sure was like the worst moment of his life. But I don't know if he'll ever learn from it. Like he was obviously embarrassed and hated it and everything, but I don't think he ever yeah. accepts responsibility. Or re- he should just move on from the damn situation. I'm telling you, if I was him right or wrong, don't mess with Bobby Lee and his girlfriend or his ex-girlfriend just stay away from that. <laughs> just stay stay away from that. Whenever they mention, you don't got to do fake love. It's just whatever, man. I have nothing to do with them. Realizes how he screwed up or realized this kind of stuff isn't a good idea. I, I mean, do think any, the Reddit thing was a little too far. Any rational person from the start could have told him this was not going to end well. I mean, Mark Harley recently said that the guy that Brendan hired or the team that he hired, the team of hackers to take down the fight and the kids talk about it. Like if you remember when Brendan would talk about this, he was acting like he was having law enforcement look into it or the FBI was looking into it or something. You know, he acted like he's having this legit team of people going after it. But according to Mark Harley, who again, hasn't really made anything up so far, this team that Brendan has was Brian Callen's. Let me see, is he going to read this out? He says that they paid him $15,000 to try to take down the subreddit. And then he just came back to them and told him his Bobby Lee behind it all. And they just believed him and they went after him right away. And then obviously that just turned into a disaster. But that's the insane. fact that Brendan thought this was a good idea. I think if that's true, that is insane. What are they doing? What the hell are they doing over there? Running around like just like just Looney Tunes. It shows he's hopeless. Like I don't know. If he'll give ever me learn. fifteen I mean, thousand to come up with this guy fifteen grand to make things a thousand times worse. Like nothing it's happened crazy. to the kids. I brought it, and this just caused so much more shit for Brendan, and it destroyed his relationship with Bobby and Brian's relationship it's with dumb Bobby. As hell. But I don't know if Brendan even thinks about it like this. You know, he probably just thinks. Oh, those trolls on Reddit did all this to me. But it's like, no, dude, you did this all to yourself. Yeah. Like, one of the most accurate. You got to take responsibility, bro. The trolls didn't tell you to go pay someone 15000 to do nothing. Yeah, your best bet is to ignore. Trust me. Your best bet is just to ignore, do whatever you're doing, do what's your job, and just move on, bro. That That is it. Whatever your job is, do your job, move on things Joe Rogan's ever said is Brendan Schaub needs a handler. I mean, that is so true. But like Mark Harley said, one of the biggest problems is Brendan's not going to listen to anybody. You know, for some reason, he thinks he's got it all figured out. Like the past few years have been a disaster. Some would even say the biggest disaster. But still, Brendan, he's got it all under control. He doesn't need any advice. He knows what he's doing with the lawsuits and the threatening and the trying to take down the subreddit. He knows what he's doing. All right, so there's just one more part of this interview I wanted to play when the host asked him about his fallout with Theo Vaughn. And of course, Brendan's reaction is exactly what you'd expect. You know, he's all confused, like, what? People are saying that? You know, me and Theo, we're best friends. We talk on the phone every day. You know, it's the same exact thing you said about Bobby Lee. And we don't have to talk about it, but the Theo Vaughn, I don't know, it was, I saw it was a lot of stuff going on on uh, social media, which is probably just all... With me and Theo? Yeah. This is my best friend. Everything's Gucci. We're great. Social media is crazy. Hell yeah. Just I now, I don't know. Well, I didn't know there was beef between the two. Um, but for him, they just be like, oh, nah, we're the best of friends. <sighs> Come on, bro. Stop that. Stop that. There's a thing. What's, yeah. the, what's the narrative? The narrative is that it was a fallout because it was the king and the sting. And what, what was it? And then king and the sting. Yeah. And then, and then it's the goal now. Right. No, the, the, yeah. The, like, again, this is social media, but 
It's the Real Housewives of YouTube. Yeah. So drama is what gets clicked. Yeah. I talked to Theo yesterday. Oh, yeah. It's one of my close friends. My kids call him Uncle Theo. Yeah. Uh, no, the thing there is, so me and Theo started King and Steam together. And then during the pandemic, he moved to Nashville. Okay. And he thought he could just zoom in and do both. Yeah. And he just couldn't. Was, yeah. He thought he could either zoom in or fly back to LA every week. Yeah. And do it. But Nashville's not close. So yeah. It was beating him up. He's like, dude, it's, it's too much. We need to find someone to fill in when I'm not there. Yeah. Delia would always fill in. Yeah. And eventually he was just like, dude, I just can't. I can't do it, man. Yeah. And he, his podcast is massive. So he's like, A, I can't do it. B, I don't need to really do it. I, I just don't have time to keep flying back and forth. He's like, yeah. how about we slip Delia in there and I'll go do my thing. I was like, all right, say less. Yeah. That's it, bro. He's fired. Yeah, I love Theo. He's, he's, he's like a brother. He said he was fired. To, uh, a no income tax state. Like Absolutely. Uh, state. Absolutely. And I love that they're just doing this in a hotel lobby. Like you see some lady walking around in the background. But of course, Brendan, he always just has the same response. You know, if you want people to believe you, you got to change it up a little bit. You can't always just be like, oh, that person, people think we have a beef. No, we're best friends. We talk every single day. I mean, he said the same exact thing about Bobby Lee when him and Brian were threatening him. And there's clearly a lot going on there. So him to use that same response is not the best look. And it makes you question it a little bit. It is kind of you know, suspect. You said me and Theo, we had some problems. Now, once again, I don't know exactly what's going on between him and Theo. Um, I didn't know that they actually had any beef. Maybe I need to look into that. But I do know that that sounds fake as hell when everything is just so, oh, it's all love. It's all love. What? No prop. That sounds suspect. When it's for everybody, yeah, nah. Nah, that sounds too suspect for me. Towards the end, and we're not as close as we used to be, but we're working on things. We're still cool. If he just said that, then I believe him. But instead, it's always the same thing. It's like everything's perfect. There are no problems, but nobody's really buying it. And again, he's acting like people are just making stuff up to cause drama, but there's no need to. Like nobody needs to make anything up when right. it just all happens. And Brendan's always the common denominator. Right. People are just gonna ask him, right? Like, especially if it's it's public information. It's best to just either be honest so they can't have an answer out there or just just disconnect from the whole thing in general. You know, he can try to put all his problems on other people and be like, Oh, it's not my fault. People are just out to get me. But for some reason, this kind of stuff only happens with him. And it seems like there's never any self-reflection. So I don't think he'll ever learn. And also Mark Harley, he had some stuff to say about Brennan's relationship with Theo. And who knows if this is true. But again, Mark Harley so far has been pretty good with this. He claims that on several occasions, Brendan complained to him in private about Theo siphoning off about $5,000 an episode. And what? I guess Brendan was nervous to bring it up to Theo, but then he finally did. And Theo's basically just like, dude, you're screwing up all the money coming in. You're really bad at business and managing money. And I guess Brendan didn't take it very well. And he wrote crazy. Off Theo as being mentally ill, difficult to work with, and in the wrong. And Mark adds that he doesn't think Theo stole any money, but he just thinks Brendan's being an idiot who can't do basic math. And he says the false accusations were about 250000 to 500000 stolen. Oh, snap. Easy. Does Theo come out? I want to hear what Theo got to say. And in total, you don't see my, he's so my there's always something his tongue. going on behind the scenes with Brendan. You know, it's never like what he makes it out to mm. be. You know, if you just took his word for it, everything's perfect. His career is going well. Everything's going according to plan. There's no drama. But in reality, it's just a shit show behind the scenes. But it is very entertaining. You know, I'll give him that. It is like watching reality TV, like he said. And if he was smart, he would start a reality TV show. I mean, that'd be perfect. But of course, he thinks he's above that. And instead, he has some stupid car show, even though he's not even really into cars and it's getting no views and people are just making fun of it. So he'll just never do anything right. Like I gave him a lot of good advice in this video, but of course, he's just going to write me off as a hater working at PF Chang's. So he'll never learn. He'll never listen and he'll never change. So that's about it here. Make sure you guys go. That's funny. Shouts to too lazy to try. Um, I think Brennan just need to just move the hell on, bro. And stop lying during interviews. I do think he was being dishonest with a lot of that. Um, but also it's not really a, a big deal of him beefing with Bobby Lee. I do think that Bobby Lee act like a victim all the time. All the damn time. And I'm sick of it. But that's just my personal opinion. Tell me what you think down in the comment section. Hey guys. 
Hope you enjoyed watching the video. Now, if you have some extra time, can you do me a favor? Check out my music. I rap, I sing, and I make beats. All of that should be linked in the description. Also, if you want to watch me live stream, you can check me out on BX Beast Boy Live. That's another YouTube channel. It should be linked to my homepage. And you can check me out on Twitch and Rumble. I'm streaming on all these platforms, man. Trying to just get out there. Also, if you want to support me, you can sign up for my memberships on my channel, as well as my Patreon for as low as $1. You get exclusive access to a bunch of videos early before you even get it on YouTube, as well as videos that's not ever going to be on YouTube. Stuff that actually got me suspended and banned. It's, it's kind of my anti-cancer culture fun for BX Beast Boy. You know what I mean? And it also helps me get resources for certain video essays and things of that nature. Check that out if you're able to. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Instagram. And join my Discord if you are able to, man. The link should be somewhere within my description or somewhere on my channel. I would really love to see you there, man. That's where you get a chance to talk to me and the rest of my supporters, man. I appreciate you guys. Bang, gang, out.